Hello, and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I am your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 142. Today, I'm doing this solo because I got a story, and honestly, I don't want to, I don't want nobody judging me as I tell this story. Uh, it involves a death, um, and I don't mean to make light of someone dying, but, um, it's okay to laugh at this, um. So I'm going to talk about death and spirits and (laughs) I'm telling this story by myself. Um, But first of all, oh, and I want to talk about, I'm going to tell you about my first, okay, I got to go do in-person readings for the first time since COVID and I had a blast, but I'm going to talk about a lot. I'm going to talk about that later. Also, I'm heavily caffeinated because of this goddamn fucking time change. So, but first, (laughs) let's pull some cards and do the the cleansing thing. I'm going to use a spray today because um, I have, my allergies have like kicked in because the trees around here are like pollinating like a mofo and my allergies have like decided to like kick in full force and my sinuses are not happy. (laughs) <laughs> so we're gonna do some spray so I call this my fuck off spray and it's literally like a little plastic bottle I got from the Dollar Tree and I fill it up with witch hazel I put some I think let's see, I'm looking in the bottle see what's floating around I see some I see pine um from the trees out front I'm seeing some rosemary and then I've got crystal chips in there I've got some bloodstone, some clear quartz to amplify that, some amethyst. There's some other something rather in there, and I cannot tell what the... Oh, it's rainbow uh, rainbow fluorite. Oh, I've got to sneeze. Hang on. Okay, I'm back. I spirit you from that. <clears throat> that sound. Anyway, so you can hear it. That's what it sounds like. Okay, so let's spray myself. I'm spraying like all around, not the computer because I don't want it to get like shitty, but it's it's in the air. Anyway, so I've got that going. I do have a candle going behind me. Um, I have like a little um like Tupper Tupperware. I'm old. A little um plastic like container that I have that I just keep on at my desk that has like the essentials. So I'm sharing this. I know this is like not my usual content, but I've got it here. So it's this little, I don't know, probably like six by three um, plastic container with a lid on it. And I've got four crystals, um, crystal points that, they're not even points but anyway they're they're four crystals uh, clear quartz crystals that I grid with um, along with some smoky quartz tumbles and some um, tourmaline and then I have a tea light that I have um, inscribed the like symbol of one of the deities that I'm working with just in case I want to light a deity candle when I'm sitting here at my my desk and I don't want to get up I have my psychic as fuck oil so I can put that on my third eye while I'm doing readings or before I'm doing readings I also have my fuck off spray my witch's shield which is the same thing I just put it out on my body and then I have a little vial of some um black witch's salt so because I do most of my work here like at my desk and my computer I just put this all in a little thingy and it's just right here on my like the shelving thing that that's attached to to my desk so anyway let's get to the cards so I am pulling from the illustrated herbiary oracle cards today all right oopsies I freaking love the artwork on this deck it is uh, it is f- created by Maya Toll and illustrated by Kate O'Hara. Love this deck. I know last week I didn't 
get the cards pulled, but it was a hella long episode, and I figured we could wait a week for an episode. Holy shit, one just like yeeted. So let me get it, it's on the floor. Oh God. I just ate a bunch of stuff. <laughs> okay, so let me get my mic a little closer. Alrighty then. Okay. So, this is the thyme herb and distill yourself. So, this to me, and it's this, oh, it's a beautiful image of like a labyrinth of thyme, like making this really cool maze with the flowers on the ends. It's beautiful. Anyway, I feel like this is a lot about distilling discernment discernment jesus today discernment i think this week pay attention um and maybe some things may be kind of a read between the lines thing okay um so pay attention to what people are saying to you and what they're not saying mommy this also asks us what about ourselves is no longer authentic what can we look at our lives, ourselves, our actions, the things that we are pouring energy into, and what can we leave behind for this next cycle? Like, we don't always have to be the same person. <laughs> um, we evolve because the world evolves and changes, and therefore so do we, because we're human and that's what we're supposed to be doing. So I feel like this is also asking us to to look at our lives, look at ourselves and saying, what is truly us? Like, who are you now? And who are you pretending to be? Um, and thyme, the actual herb, can be like an antimicrobial that has some properties of that. So like on the medicinal side, it can help get rid of germs and things like that. But it can also help work to get rid of the non- like the non-true you, the um, inauthentic parts of ourselves that we're clinging to because that's what we're used to. So this is kind of a deep card and that takes more than a week to deal with this stuff. But I feel like this card is saying, hey, this week, mm, going to be important. So think about it. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about <clears throat> the... Um, the card reading day. So I decided that I miss reading in person and doing the things I used to do um, prior to COVID. And so I contacted a few um, places that are kind of local to me in the next town over where I used to have my shop. And one of the businesses finally contacted me back and was like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love to have you come and do like a pop-up reading every once in a while. And so we scheduled it for um, last Saturday, not last, like this Saturday that just happened. And I was not really expecting very many people because it's a very conservative area. When I had my shop, I had a lot of pushback. <laughs> um, we had the Pagan Fall Festival and literally they wrote an article about me and my kind um, and how we're unholy and blah, blah, blah. Anyway. Um, so I really didn't, I expected my friends to show up and the regulars that I used to read for to show up and, and that would have been like outstanding. I was super excited to do it. Um, so I get my stuff ready. I get my like tablecloth and I, all my pretty stuff and I wanted to like, because I'm, you know, this Gemini Scorpio rising, you know, person, I, it all had to be aesthetically pleasing. So I had this like turquoise-ish um, blue and black type theme. Also, I'm, you know, 80s, 90s kids. So there's where that comes from. Um, so I had all this beautiful stuff set up. I had my crystals that matched the theme. I had an outfit on with little pops of that color to kind of complement it. Um, I had, you know, I wasn't dressed like overly witchy to scare people, but I definitely looked, um, you know, 
I looked like a, a hippie that was a little more edgy. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I had this really beautiful um, moon phases skirt on and like a flowy blouse and um, the coolest. I thrifted this really cool um, bell sleeved silver <laughs> crushed velvet um, like like cardigan thing. Love it. Anyway. That was my outfit for the day. And combat boots, because that's pretty much all I wear. So anyway, and tights underneath, because I don't like showing my skin, my legs, because I'm self-conscious about them. So tights, always. So I get there, or I'm on my way there, and it's one, it's the first time I have driven in forever, like that far by myself. Like, literally, it's probably been two years. (laughs) So I was kind of nervous about driving, But I was like, cool, I'm not going to have to go driving at night, so I'm not as worried about it, right? So I get on my way, and about halfway into (laughs) this whole thing, um, I start realizing I have to do this in front of people and not online, and I'm going to be like face-to-face with their energy, and I start to kind of have a little bit of butterflies and a little panicky and I'm like oh my god so I'm like driving down the road I'm like I had to like get some kind of I've got a vent so I like voice noted one of my friends I'm like oh my god I'm getting nervous I'm freaking out that's another reader and um later they did text like they sent me a text like it's okay breathe you're gonna have a great time you know comforted me totally totally helped so I get there I get set up And I'm supposed to go from 12 to 4, like from noon to 4 o'clock. And I'm thinking, like I had already told my husband, probably going to come home early because I can't imagine very many people showing up. Like, I think we started advertising two weeks ago. You know, we didn't really get ahead of it very far. And I only um, advertised on a few Facebook groups that were local. Not a biggie. And they just had a metaphysical fair um, a little farther away, but sort of local. So I'm like, man, people probably are like, they spent all their money and they're not going to want to go out and see more people. So I didn't really have huge expectations. (laughs) So I got there and there were people already lined up to do readings and it wasn't even 12 yet so I like rushed getting set up and I started reading for people I got that first group out and then I stood up I stretched um they got me a nice coffee I was like hell yeah um I sat down and that was the last time I sat down till 5 15 we ended up staying an extra hour and 15 minutes because there were so freaking many people there it was amazing I had a blast it was like like all my butterflies are finally gone and it was so nice to help people and give people a little guidance and reassurance and like I didn't do mediumship I was just doing strictly oracle card readings for people because that's the safest in a um conservative town like this um and it's because of the recent like social and religious climate in this country um, with the, cons- with the conservatives and how brazen and bold some of them have gotten, I was a little bit, you know, like aware, I guess. And wasn't like nervous about them, but I was aware that coming in dressed like in full, like, you know, the craft, you know, dressed like Nancy probably wasn't a good idea. And tarot cards probably weren't a good idea either. So that's why I brought my Oracle deck. Anyway, it was a really great day. I like... We've been having, you know, a little bit cut back in our income. So this definitely helped put some some cash away to make up for that difference. And it was it was just a really great day. And then I realized I have to drive home in the dark because I still had to do one house call for somebody. And that was awesome. But I just I guess in my mind, I'm like, it's going to be sunny. (laughs) This is like the flighty airhead of me. And so I went and got um food for us for supper I went and filled a little bit of diesel up in the tank of the truck and I drove home and it was in the dark and I freaked out but I got home okay and it's all ended well so I just had to share that because it was like a highlight of my and like of 2000 you know of the year because I was just so fucking excited um that I got to do that 
Um, and I, oh, and I did pull out a little bit of mediumship because this one lady came in and she was so scared that her brother didn't get to go to heaven. And it's hard to talk to somebody that is, that their reality is like, how do I, how do I word this? The reality about the afterlife is contained within the very rigid walls of organized Christianity, the religion of Christianity. Um, the afterlife is not that small. It's not as, as small and defined as what Christianity portrays. So, I did, I'm like, hang on, let's do some mediumship here, let's get him here, let's talk to him, made sure that it was him, he identified himself, gave some really specific stuff about himself to her, and then I let him explain to her where he's at right now, and, um... I think, like, her face, like, the wash of relief, like, she'd been having nightmares about it. So, the wash of relief on his face, on her face, like, that was priceless. That, like, that kind of stuff, when I get to give people hope and um, closure and that kind of relief, that's when I'm like, God, I love my job. Like, I fucking love this job. So... That's how my day went, and it was awesome. <laughs> okay. Now let's get on to the death thing. So, as you know, I have, or may not, but I've talked about him on the podcast before. I have an elderly neighbor. It's crotchety, and we kind of have little neighbor wars over things because he's just kind of a turd. And he has very poor health. He's not supposed to be smoking. He's smoking like a chimney. Um, and then this last summer, we thought we smelled something from his house. We thought he had de been deceased. Um, I tried to check on him and his stuff was all locked and he wouldn't, nothing, nobody answered the door. So I called the local sheriff and he did a wellness check and got in, you know, he was okay. But he ended up telling the sheriff... I'm, and we called him. We have his cell phone number. So we called the cell phone number. We tried to get in his house. We tried everything to see if he was alive. Um, and this, mind you, this man, I, I scoop his, um, walk in the wintertime. It's not like we are like enemies. We're frenemies. Okay. So, um, so he told the sheriff, I'm not going to answer my phone anymore. I'm not answering my door anymore. If you want to see if I'm alive, I'm always in my recliner in front of the TV. If you go to the south side of my house and look through the window, that's where I'll be. So don't knock on my door anymore. Um, and he was kind of an ass about it. So we're like, well, fine, shit. So anyway, everything goes back to normal. We're still bickering over things like his tree that's touching my tree and causing it hand damage. And there's a thing in the backyard like his his shed in the backyard is about ready to fall onto our pro like literally tumble onto our property and he won't get rid of it so anyway we go through this and we're still kind of yeah, biting at each other anyway oh this is so terrible um so <laughs> it's cold in nebraska in the winter time like there for a while we went through a really cold streak where it was you know the wind chill was like made it feel like it was negative 30 out it was awful um, so I'm sitting here, I'm sitting on the couch. It was like, I don't know, it was almost dark and we're getting ready. I, Brad had to go to a village meeting because he's on the village board. Um, and I'm like zooted, I mean zooted, because I'm getting ready to have my like alone time where I can watch documentaries about things and I'm zooted. That's like my, and I have snacks. I'm like all fucking prepared. I've already, you know, I'm already elevated. I've already started my snacks. I've chosen a documentary and Brad goes out the back door to go to his meeting. He comes running back in and he's like, Ed's down, Ed's down. Oh my God, Ed's down. And he's, and I'm like, wait, what? He's like, no, for real. Like Ed has fallen down. And I'm like, shit. So we both run out the door and we go over to Ed's house and he's on the ground and we touch his back and he is been down. <laughs> he, he's been down a while because he is like frozen ham. Okay, so we call 911, Brad calls 911, he calls it in, and um, 
so and most of the people that are on the board are also a part of the like the local emts and things so the and it happens that the county attorney is our is there because that's he has to go to all of the witchy or the witchy the village meetings jesus the name um he goes to the village meeting so he's there getting statements along because the sheriff is out of town he's coming because he has to actually be there to record everything and you know whatever so the em all of the emergency people medical people are there they you know check him over <laughs> um the county attorney is there taking some statements from me and brad um and the deputy is here also taking statements from brad and i and you know whatever so like we're like racking how the fuck did we not see that he's been there because he obviously has been there for a few days so we're like because you can't really see like from our property to his he was kind of underneath his back porch so realistically the only thing we could have saw was maybe like his back legs the reason brad got to see is because he went out and looked back i don't know why he did but anyway so just happenstance so you know we're like oh my god we feel like the worst fucking human beings on the face of the earth you know so it's it's grew you know he's fine it looks like he had a hard heart like had some kind of heart failure and fell to the ground um because he is not physically hurt like his head didn't have any trauma it, anyway i'll spare you all that but anyway looks like he died of natural causes anyway um so they all they get that done and then you know they took him away and we come inside and brad's like i gotta go to my meeting i'm sorry so he goes to a meeting and everybody's like asking if we're okay we're okay brad honestly is not okay he is so 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 soft and he i can see he wants to at first he really wanted to cry He was having a hard time seeing the body and that's totally normal i'm not normal i am a fucked up human being and i'm fine with deceased beings to me i view them as meat suits his soul is not there um so brad goes to his meeting i come inside and i'm like how the fuck did i not notice he was dead like and then i remember so last summer when um maddie and i thought that we smelled him dead i remember saying something to the effect that god if he passes away he's gonna come in here his spirit is going to freaking haunt my house he's going to be awful just fucking awful to me like I, I, he's, he's that kind of dude he was also kind of a little bit of a you know dirty old man um so i put up specific wards and sigils to keep him specifically out of my house off my property and away from me and my husband <laughs> so that's the only thing i can think of is that he passed away and the reason i didn't notice his spirit is that or i'm just a shitty medium yeah i guess or i wasn't paying attention um but that's the only thing i can think of is that the words i forgot about them actually i was like fuck i forgot i did that um so yeah so which is write down when you do words and sigils and things like that because you'll forget and then you'll just this yeah just do it just write things down that's yeah anyway so that is the story about how my neighbor died and um we feel like a piece of shit because he had laid there for a few days and um yeah so i did a complete cleansing of the house i went over to his property when my husband was at work and i was like i said my i'm sorry's i left him like a little um treat over there um of the i saw him carrying certain uh pop soda whatever you want to call it so i left the soda over there and i was like bro i am so sorry that i didn't notice your body laying there like i didn't i didn't see it like legit just didn't see it didn't notice you because i basically locked me or i locked you off our property um and i don't go on your property um so anyway uh i did not notice his spirit around um i don't think he would give two fucks to stay around because 
he was a loner in life, um, and he really didn't want to be around people. <laughs> so, um, so I did that, and it was more, like, I'm sure that was more to make me feel better, um, because, you know, humans. But I did that, and I was like, sorry, dude. Um, but they didn't even, like, his family came, and they, because he's a hoarder and a shut-in, they had to have this, like, giant... Um, dumpster that came on like a semi thing and they cleaned out his house and they're gonna bulldoze it and haul it off because it's needs to it's basically a condemned home um and yeah that's that's the end of that story but we felt like pieces of shit so lesson learned um we check on our elderly elderly neighbors we have two up the road and like I go by and I'm like just notice like I notice to see if they have left in a while I like notice I'm like okay cool they have went to got groceries and I wave at them and like okay cool Sharon you know she went and she's coming back her car is really loud so that's easier to like notice um but yeah because we live on a block of just old people except for the people next door the people next door are young and they have children that are, we, I call them Ricky Bobby's kids from Talladega, Talladega Nights because yesterday, especially because it's nice out, they screamed, just literally screamed. Um, they were playing on their bikes and one of them just, they both did it, but one more than the other. They just screamed and screamed and screamed because that's how you play, I guess, is screaming. Um, my mom would have whooped my ass and I'm not saying whoopings are a good thing because they're not. I don't, I ne never did that to my child. I don't believe in that. Um, but yeah, don't, oh, yeah, it's super fun. Can't wait till we move. Anyway, so that's that. <laughs> it's not funny, but it kind of is. I mean, death is not funny. He knew he was going to pass away. He was not in good health. Like, the, the sheriff let us know, like, last summer, like, you guys are probably going to be the ones to find the body. Just get used to that. Like, set in. Settle in with that fact. Y'all are going to find him. Um, and he let us know, like, what to do. Like, call him. Um, call, like, call him. Call 911. Um, that way it's officially recorded and all that good stuff. And so that's what we did. Um, so I just wish Brad wouldn't have found him because he's so fucking sensitive and it just his little heart <laughs> or his big ass heart it just it it crushed him to see to see that and it just it's not good for him it, it isn't and I wish I could shield my teddy bear from all of the bad things in this world because I see how much it affects him and I just want to take that shit all away and show him the good parts of life only, <laughs> you know? Um, and yeah, there's probably something wrong with me that it doesn't affect me. It's not like it, I enjoy it. Like, no, it's still a bad thing, but it doesn't affect me like it does him. And I don't know if that's because, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's my view on the afterlife or if it's, my dealings with death the few times I have sat with people that have passed away it's been rather peaceful I guess if you can call death peaceful sometimes I think it is um he has dealt with death in an opposite way the people he have has seen pass away have not been um in a peaceful fashion I guess let's just put it that way um so maybe that's why um he he has such a hard time with it but anyway I guess my point is we all see it differently and I wish I could like erase the bad memories like that from from his from his brain so it didn't affect his heart so much I have a book and I know I've mentioned it before in prior episodes previous episodes whatever um, but there is a book that, um, I, I was given and I read it and I know I featured it on the, um, podcast before. I think there was a podcast about death that I did. Um, but anyway, the book is called Whispers on the Wind by Misty Storm and it is all about, um, death and dying and, um, rituals 
like I'm looking at the table of contents. There's like a, a dying vigil, a funeral rite, a memorial puppet, grave dedications, um, cremation rites, spreading ashes, um, a pet death and welcoming a new ancestor. There's tons and tons. There's a bunch of chapters. I did not read off them all, but it's a very good book to have um, because death happens. It's inevitable. You're going to have to deal with this at some point in your life. So I highly recommend it. Um, yeah. So I think it's a good time to mention it. So again, that's Whispers on the Wind by Misty Storm. It is not like a huge book. Let me see how many pages are in it. Like a hundred and I think there's like 110 pages or something. So um, check that out if you are interested. Um, when my pet passed away, the few pets we've had passed away lately, um, I have done the, the pet um, ritual in here. And it really is beautiful. And I, I really, I really found comfort in having that there to, to go by. So anyway, I liked it. So I, I guess I'm going to make this a, a decently short episode because the last one was so long. And also I don't have a guest this week. I was going to, and then just shit happened. Um, Brad got injured and just, shit just did not line up this week. Um, I've been having technical difficulties. My goddamn cat this morning. This is why, this is why the episode is late today. I will tell you, my cat Tinkerbell. So I'm like doing stuff on my computer. And I'm doing it in the living room because we have a giant picture window and it overlooks my yard and the trees and it's so sunny and beautiful today. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to work from here today because it's great. Uh, and I'm like, oh, wait, I got to go get something from the other room. So I go into the other room and I come back and she's sitting on my keyboard. I'm like, shit. So I shoo her off. I look at my computer and it's on airplane mode and like nothing is working. So I can't get it off airplane mode by the, like, the little quick um, thing, quick settings, you know, on the lower right hand corner. That's not working. Actual settings, you can't get to the network settings. Network setting is grayed out, will not work. I'm like, shit. So I tried the hotkeys, made sure that those are actually like enabled, enabled, and they are, and they're not working either. So I'm like looking online on my, on my phone, like searching online to see what the fix is. It's gotta be a fix. There's a fix for everything. There's like a special, like, you know, funky combination of keys that's gonna work nothing worked I searched for it was nothing so upset with my cat so I'm like looking all over trying to do it I'm like screw it I'm just gonna restart it and I did not want to restart it the reason I hadn't is because I had documents open that I could not get to because it was great at, like I couldn't get to anything um so I'm like if I restart this I'm gonna lose all of my work and I'm going to be pissed. But there was no other choice. So I hit the restart button. And when I hit the restart button, this little screen comes up and says there has, there's so many, basically there was so many errors on my computer that it was like, you're going to have to, like, we're going to have to reset up your computer. I'm like, fuck. So it restarts. And I basically had to do, go through like the resetting up of everything. And I'm like, great. I'm losing all the work I've had on this brand new computer you know, because I had just started using this w this month. And, um, but I had plenty of work on it. <laughs> and I did that and it all, it, it came back. It was fine. But that was the delay. It's my cat. Tinkerbell. She, she had, I call her my little raccoon because she gets like super excited and then runs around like, you know how the raccoons kind of like bounce when they run they have that little weird bouncy crawl thing that's what she does when she's super like got this that's tinkerbell zoomies that's what she had all day and she must have zoomied on my computer and then just sat there like awesome my work is done so that's what happened <laughs> uh, okay so 
Um, that's it. I will have a guest next time, so look for that. Um, I cannot wait for you to meet this person. I think you're really gonna enjoy what they have to say. It just did not line up to get this in the books today, so, or this week. So, you will meet them next time, and yeah. Check out, um, my classes. I added a new class, um, it's, uh, under classes. If you go to the classes page on my website, uh, witchywomanpodcast.com, um, it'll show you. It's an herbal, uh, herbal recipe type class. I have decided I'm going to sell, or I'm not going to sell, I'm going to have classes and teach you all my recipes and all of the ways I make stuff instead of selling products because I don't have time to sell products. I tried that. It was just a shit show. Um, I'm still trying to like get orders out that I cannot find and reimburse people and all that good stuff. So if you ordered something, I'm trying to get it done. Anyway, so I'm going to do classes um, in like part one, part two, part three, whatever. And I'm going to teach you how to do the things I do. So my oil blends, my incense mixes, teas, um, how I make candles, all of the things that I do, um, all of my sprays, all of it. I'm going to teach you how to make them. So, um, some of these are going to be really simple. You can get the stuff out of your kitchen cabinet. Um, some of them require a little more stuff. So I will be posting like in those classes, I'll post what you will need. So everybody that signs up will get an email that says, Hey, these are the class supplies and this is where I get it. That's the cheapest <laughs> that I have found. <laughs> so, um, that way you have plenty of time to get what you need. And then I will also put substitutions on there so that if you can't get something, here's an alternative herb or oil or whatever. So that's my plan because I figure screw it. Everybody needs to know how to do these things. And these are recipes that I have made specifically. So they're not going, some of these don't have traditional, quote unquote, traditional um, witchcraft ingredients. They're things that I find around here or in my environment, but I will have alternative, um, ingredients. So if you can't find that stuff, you can use something else. <laughs> so also, cause I'm smart, um, I thought that would be a good way for us to fill up our herbal grimoires. So if you bought one of those herbal grimoires off my uh, off the book website, then these will go right along with these classes. You can fill out the herb information from each of the herbs that I use and then put the recipes in back. So, yay. All right, I will talk to you guys next week. Oh, the car weekly card poll video is up on YouTube. If you want to look that up, hit up my YouTube channel. Link is um, on my website. So, I will talk to you guys next week. And as always, stay witchy. Bye-bye. <laughs>